Well, welcome to part five of Allen's Day. Back working on this new 5100E John Deere. Uh, going from a few upgrades to get a little more close to perfect. Well, today is uh, part five and I'm going to start on the interior and I'll sort of walk you in there and show you what we got going on here. So, getting into this interior, it is just a fantastic interior here. Um, and what I have to compare that against is uh, my 180 Alice Chalmer open cab on there that I've had for pretty close to 40 years. A uh, little bit of an upgrade uh, getting into this. And I'm going to just start picking through a few things that I just want to change on here. I know that John Deere has several different versions of these tractors. This 5100E is a, a base model. Um, and I'm sure uh, there's probably a lot of these items that I'm doing in here are already in place and set up. Not quite sure. But this is the one we have, so this is the one I'm going to work with right here. So just get back in here and I'll show you just a few things where I'm going to start with. And I'm going to put a uh, phone holder. And what we've got here is this is made by bullet point. Uh, these are a real nice kit that they have. They've got all different configurations of this, of different brackets. And we put these in, everything gets one or two of these in there. So I think I've got a place picked out for this. It's going to go right here on this bar. There's nothing behind it that you need to see anyways. I'll put it here. It's got, that's valuable space looking down in there. So it's going to go up over here. So phone holder. One of the next items that are going in here is a USB, USB, and USB-C. And the C is that little one. And there's starting to be quite a few of those electronics that are using that so I might as well upgrade and put that in here and this I'm gonna probably put into the side here somewhere um, no don't know what's behind all this stuff yet I just got in here and started poking around so it's gonna get a USB port and this particular one has a voltage gauge on there that way I can uh, at a glance have that set up and everything that I'm putting in here is gonna be set up with a key on so that when I turn the key off it cuts all the power so we've got that going on through here as long as we're over in this corner here lighting been in here and in, in the evenings or at night a couple of times and there's just not enough light in here uh, there's one light right there and then there's a little running light courtesy light right here um need some more light in here so what i've got is i've got this uh led light that i have and not quite sure where i got it from um might have been an amazon deal um or rigid hitch um puts those sells these items and this light is going to go right up in this corner here i'll have a switch down on the panel there this will be mounted up here and this will be hooked up with uh, key on power so we've got that that light there then we've got another yes it's a rigid hitch and this light there's the part number for it and I use these this particular light on a lot of things I try to get as many as I can uh, they're back ordered on these again but when I get them I get about a half a dozen at a time and they get put put in all the vehicles I like a lot of light in the even at night when you're in a vehicle that you can turn on and do something and this particular light I'm gonna see if I can get it up 
underneath the dash somewhere uh, just to have some under dash lighting in there and then with all this electrical stuff going on well I got to find a place to put it and I found the electrical box down in here oh they got everything all taped up um, and anytime I work on any of these projects I stay away from any of the factory wiring in there. If I'm gonna do something in there, I am not gonna start cobbing into the wiring system like you see so much stuff. So what I'm gonna do is put a an auxiliary fuse panel in here set up with a uh, breaker feeding that panel. And then I'm going to have a relay in there hooked up with uh, key on. So the only thing that I have to do in here to tap into the system is uh, tap into the battery lug down here. I think this would be a good place to get hot power. And then I've just got to find some place in here where I can get some key on power without having to uh, disturb um, the tractor's uh, electrical system. So... I just need one wire to tap in and it's not going to take much power. So uh, we've got that going on with the electrical. And then a couple other items, small items I got to tweak on here is um, we've got the toolbox that came off the front fender. You'll see that in some other parts how I remove that. But I'm going to put it to use yet. I'm going to, it seems like it fits right in this area here so I can put a few tools in here that uh, some of the nicer stuff you don't want to just sort of leave out in the end there in the cabinet. Um, I need to put an aluminum angle all the way across this edge here. And what that's going to do, it's going to just keep anything you put in here from wanting to slide out and bounce off there. So I looked underneath there and there's absolutely nothing underneath this metal plate. So I'm just going to take and put a quart two quarter inch uh, nut certs and put those in here put just a little aluminum angle and bolt that down that way whatever you set alongside your seat here uh, and set in there it's not going to be being a safety hazard and bouncing out and ending up on your feet uh, a couple other little small items i gotta um, don't like is some wires there yeah, they're, they're all covered, and I'm sure there's a grommet around there, but just having exposed wires that aren't in a loom, um, I just want to clean that up a little bit. I'll investigate that and see what we can do. May not ever be a problem, but I don't want to find out. That looks like a pretty big chunk of wires there that's uh, not protected. Um, so I'll clean that up. Um, otherwise, everything else is just nice in here. Oh, there is one other item that I'm going to pick on John Deere about or somebody. I'm not quite sure what the purpose of these two freaking bolts are that are just hanging out here. Uh, I didn't investigate much into that to see what these two bolts are for. Uh, yeah, I'd like to just come in here with a grinder and just hack those things off. But for now, I'm just going to put a couple little... Uh, pieces of 3 8 gas line hose, rubber hose, put them on here, leave them stick out so that uh, it's going to be a bad day you freaking snag yourself on these uh, these two bolts here. Uh, but other than that, uh, I'm loving this tractor. Uh, everything just looks, uh, looks great in here. So I'll uh, bring you back when I get a few items put together in here. Talk to you later. Well, Taz and I are back working on the interior here. I'll show you what I got for the uh, under dash lights that I was talking about before. What I've got is I've got this light bracket that I made up. Just took some uh, light aluminum, uh, bent it up, cut it up, and that's what I'm mounting this, this light to. And one thing with these, I'll show you a little bit of what I did on this. You see that there's just a little bit of 
it's oozing out. I probably put a little too much. But anytime I got an application where you've got something that's going to be vibrating or moving, um, like I showed you before, I always take this Bostic adhesive and I just put a dab of that, a little dollop underneath the light, a couple little little screws in there to hold it. Um, a little more about these, how I got these lights set up here is, you can see that I've got a red piece of heat shrink on here. You gotta want, when you have LED lights, don't trust their black and their white or whatever wires they have. You have to test to see which one is positive. And then once you test which one is positive, then I go ahead and mark it which is positive. That way you know and the next person knows what it is. And then I've got some wire loom. I shrink wrapped it on the top and then this will get put apart all the way here. So this is all gonna be wire loom and tucked in here. Now as far as how the light fits, there's just a little bracket, a little gap right underneath here that this light bracket fits in there just just nice and I drilled two 3 16 holes once you're sitting in the seat you can't even see the slights there and it's not even going to affect your feet but at night uh, if you need a little extra mood lighting in the tractor uh, flip the switch um, and you'll have power so that's how that's going in there maybe a couple little stainless steel screws and fender washers and That'll be secured in there. And then I've got the wires run. What I've got here is this is just a 14-2 trailer wire. I use a lot of this. It's a coated wire. That way it's all protected. And John Deere has a real nice little chase system underneath this floor mat for running wires. You can see that there's plenty of place that I can run wires. And those will all go back up to the... Uh, fuse panel that I'm going to put in up on the top there so overall I went uh, went together pretty good uh, making the lights up I'll uh, bring you back again once uh, Taz and I have these things put in here so talk to you later and just going into the cab now um, beautiful beautiful cab in here just to start out with down low here uh, there were some wires in this corner that were exposed they weren't exposed wires, they were just not in loom. Uh, clean those up. And then I put a, bra a angle stop right here. Put some nut certs in here, some stainless bolts. That way whatever you put up on this little ledge here isn't falling down on your feet and causing a safety hazard as you're going down the road. So, uh, small item there. Um, added a uh, mood light down in the bottom here you can see that up in the bottom there once you get up in the top you can't see it an LED light put that in there and more about the lights in here added uh, switches over here for the lights so we've got uh, this is for the uh, floor light and this is for the big light up in the corner which it's pretty bright but your back is going to be towards it and it's just so much nicer in here um, added in a USB USC port here with a uh, this one has a volt gauge on there so you can at a glance you can see that where the battery is at on here and then also with the lights here there's a light up in here this is just a running light on here when it's up and running this is always on i took that there's an incandescent bulb up in there i'm not quite sure why they still use incandescent bulbs in these so i took that out i put a uh, led light in there a little bit brighter uh, and it's going to stay a little cooler. And the big one that I had a concern on was this one over here. This one is the 
interior light that comes on every time you open the door. This light was getting so hot it was hardly you couldn't hardly touch it here. And there again there was an incandescent filament type bulb in there. Um, and if you look at the RV industry and all the problems they had uh, with those bulbs heating up, they can cause some problems in there. So I think that's one thing John Neard's John Deere needs to do is step it up a little bit with uh, moving up into some LEDs a little bit. Unless there's a reason for it, I don't know. But change that out. And then working over here, I've uh, got the electrical, added an electrical panel uh, in here. And with this electrical panel, I just tapped in here, so everything I did to this unit is here. I didn't do any tying into the system except into one place where I needed a trigger wire uh, to activate the relay to operate the uh, fuse block. So, uh, fuse block is in, a little detail in one of the other parts with that. Um, I wish that John Deere would leave provisions or make something I'm almost positive that most of these tractors, somebody adds something on here electrical, and I don't see any practical way that John Deere left you to um, add any extra electrical in here without tearing into the fuse box. It's just a little bit easier to have this separate block totally separate from it. So, And then while I was in here, I was talking about wire looms, Just I just went in and all these different areas where all these wires we're in here that have potential over the next 20, 40 years to be rubbing. I put some wire loom on there because like I said, I don't want to be the guy to try to track down a busted wire. Uh, it's, it's not fun, believe me. Um, and a little bit of prevention will help on there. So uh, that was set up there. Uh, the other areas that worked on here is another USB, USC outlet here put the phone holder there and right here right here is the switch for the uh, for the backup camera and I can switch through and there's also a uh, SD card in there that I can go through and so I can look down in there and hopefully I can see a little bit more down with that loader, with that camera being up high like that, that's just going to be a little easier if you got a bucket on there or you got pallet forks that you can get what you want. And then the big thing is the um, uh, reverse on here. It's just a couple times I drove it, the amount of torquing your neck you have to do to make sure there's nothing behind you is just huge. Uh, going to be safer on the neck is not having to be looking back. I mean, they got a pretty good mirror in there, but I think that camera's going to do a bit better job. Um, put a couple little rubber stoppers over these bolts that they had hanging out here. And out of everything on this tractor, the big downfall that I found so far in here that I do not like is the way that you put this tractor in the park. You have to move it over up and over and I'm sure you're going to get used to it and it's you're going to get a handle on it but I will guarantee you that more often than not people are going to jump out of this tractor with it in neutral and not going all the way with the effort and physical to, to put it in the park there and so that's that's the big downfall in here is this and I don't think my wife is going to be able to drive this tractor um, easily to get getting that into park every time you get out of here. I mean, she can drive a dozer, dump trucks, um, and the other tractors and skid steers, but trying to get that thing in the park and out of park, it, it's going to be a challenge. But other than that, this is just an absolute beautiful tractor. And we're going to have many years of use out of it so thank you for watching all the phases of this process that we did 
and uh, we'll get some uh, parts on it actually doing some work. So thank you very much for watching. Talk to you guys later. Thank you for watching Alan's Day. Life is about making choices. Some things are already perfect. Some things you may choose to upgrade. This channel will show you both. Please like, subscribe, and share. Thanks again.